Well, welcome back, Blade Gang. I thought we'd have a little fun today and look at five folders of varying price ranges that I consider to be massive. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're going to let me know that there is ones that are more massive or larger than these. Um, here's my criteria for this little collection is that they're about four inches in blade length and they're quite tall in both the handle and the blade. So makes them thicker, taller, larger looking. Yes, there are five and a half inch and six inch bladed folders, but these are massive in my book. <laughs> Let's start over on the right here with a good old cold steel Formax Scout. This is a economy version of the Formax, which I believe is in S35VN. This guy is in OS 10, or is it OS 10A? It's OS 10A, made in Taiwan. And it is a massive knife. We're going to show you some contrast uh, near the end of this with some standard size folders, just so you can see that these are indeed massive. So what I'm talking about here, and there'll be links in the description, so you can purchase these if you'd like. I don't make any money on it, but you can find them inch and a half tall. Okay, so. This uh, inch and a half tall Formax Scout Cold Steel is a knife you can depend on. It's got that amazing lock designed by Andrew Demko. There we go. It's, um, I'm not usually a big fan of um, back locks. I don't have that many of them. Uh, it used to be the only lock back in the day. We're talking... 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, and until liner locks became a thing, you know. And now it's all about liner locks and frame locks and button locks and access locks. But it is hard to find a stronger setup than this. We've got a really nice go forward choil on this and a very useful utilitarian type drop point blade. Stonewash finish. If you want a rugged knife that you can beat the heck out of, I think, uh, you know, this is going to be the one. And, you know, I think it's coming in well under 100 still. So you're not going to have to lay out a lot of money. And uh, it's just one of those knives that you can carry in your jeans, carry on a, on a job site, and just use the heck out of it. Also a massive clip there that's got lots of tension on it. Man, you might even need to adjust that if you're going to stuff it in your jeans. Not deep carry, but um, you can get at it, which is going to be important with this style of knife. I'm going to leave that guy open, put it over here. And we're going to go on to the next massive knife, probably one of the most popular and famous, if you will, Dirk Pinkerton design proponent by Artisan. This was one of the originals, not the titanium model. You can get these now for around 50 bucks in various G10 handle colors. And it's a nice G10. It's a nice blue gray G10. Comes with, and I don't have it on the table, a stud that goes through here and screws in that turns it into pretty much a fixed blade knife. You could carry that with you if you're going to be working hard with this knife. You're not going to be really putting it in there at the last moment to uh, engage somebody in uh, self-defense. <laughs> but uh, it's there nonetheless, and it was an interesting feature that they added. Again, Dirk Pinkerton, uh, you know, if you think of the Main Street and some of those designs with the Warncliffe style blade, you can think of this. And I had somebody tell me recently that a fixed blade that I put out there by t -Kill Knives, I think it was the Nightshade, has almost this exact same profile. And he said, nope, that's 
a reverse tanto. Well, I suppose any Warncliffe, <laughs> pretty much any Warncliffe can be a reverse tanto. There's your tanto, right? <laughs> but I think most of us are calling this a Warncliffe. Look at a huge fuller down the middle there. Reminds me of some of the custom knives by um, Cohen's Craft. Morgan Cohen's loves to put those giant fullers down the middle. Um, got some pretty useful jimping here. It won't rip your thumb up, but it is very bumpy. Got a giant thumb stud there. So you can use either the back flipper. And it swings out with authority, let me tell you. And this is a D2 knife. So... You can use the thumb stud, and it's also very positive, and it's a handful. You can see how tall this one is, probably a little taller than the Formax. Yeah, it's coming in over an inch and three quarters, almost two inches. That is a tall blade, therefore it qualifies as massive. Just, you're getting a lot for your money here. For around 50, 60 bucks, no more, I think and a massively thick blade stock on this as well. If you like warnings, you can get this. I think also um, Knife Center's got one in all titanium that's all bead blasted for about 175, 180 bucks in M390. It's a great deal. May pick one up myself. All right, I'm gonna move over here to a Kaiser designed by John Gray. And there you can see on the blade, it is the GPB1. And there's the make the designer's name. GPB1 stands for Gray's Pocket Brute 1. And you can flick it out, it needs a little wrist action. You've got that very interesting thumb stud that's scalloped. Only on one side, nope, two sides. And as far as I know, Hmm. Yeah, it is locking up on those studs because there's no pin, right? And there's no internal track. So no hidden pins and no pin. What you see right there is just a spacer basically to hold the knife together. But yeah, it's resting on those two pins. It's S35VN, all titanium handle. It's a beautiful looking knife. Uh, there's also a knife called the SLT that he designed that's sort of like a junior version of this slimmer. But this is another very tall blade, hence we've included it in the massive knife lineup. That's almost an inch and three quarters. So while the Formax was only an inch and a half and looks huge, these are actually taller blades. And it has a nice taper towards the pommel on this, a wide or long lanyard slot. And it's got barrel spacers all throughout. Interesting kind of a spoon shaped clip. They didn't overdo it with this. So that's kind of nice. And these massive, do I keep saying massive? Yes, pivots that are slotted so you can use a coin, like a dime or maybe even a nickel in there to uh, adjust this. I haven't tried that yet. It doesn't really need it. It is uh, pretty smooth and drop shut. That is the Gray's Pocket Brute, number one. And I'm going to stuff them in over there. Let's look at a PMP Knives Smilodon. Look at this brute of a knife. Alpha Smilodon, M390, titanium flamed, kind of hard to see, but it is a flamed anode, gray anode titanium with an interesting clip very tall. It's got standoffs here on the clip. It's got a ceramic ball there. It is a frame lock. Extremely drop shut. And what have we got for blade height at the widest on this? We've got, again, uh, somewhere between an inch and a half and an inch and three quarters. 
So again, very tall. And these are all coming in at around, you know, this is three and three quarters. I believe we've got a four inch on the proponent and we've got a four inch on the Formax Scout. Beautiful jimping here. Works perfectly. And it's got a crown spine right in that area where your the thumb ramp is. Uh, not so much on the top. And it is a drop point with a pronounced forward belly. Very useful. And, oh yeah, got a glass breaker built into the end. It's on its own little platform. So very strong. Good grip on this knife, even though it's very thin across the, uh, across the, the scales, the side, the top. That is the PMP Smilodon. It comes in a very, very nice um, case. That uh, advertises everything nicely. PMP knives. You get a uh, coin in there with the, uh, the Smilodon um, tiger on it. Saber tooth tiger. There he is. I mean, it's a cool challenge coin in a cool case. Uh, and that does jack the price up, I think, uh, somewhere in the $250, $275 range. So that is the PMP Smilodon. We'll arrange them all before we're done. Finally, the Kaiser Sheepdog XL. This. Kling, you get a really interesting sound, kind of a metallic ring when you open this knife. 154 cm Kaiser. Um, there is the uh, model number, I believe. And um, there's the sheepdog symbol. There's a series of these. There's the mini sheepdog, etc. Um, this one comes through with uh, carbon fiber. As far as I can see, it is genuine carbon fiber. And is it layered? I guess that's the question. Hard to tell whether that's just a surface laminate or not. Okay. It's got the weave that you can see through. So, you know, it's reminiscent of some of the Spyderco knives that have the uh, laminate on them. So um, it's either or. I think at the price point, it may not be solid carbon fiber, but a lot of knives out there with carbon fiber these days that um, are not that high in price. So here you have an extremely tall blade. What do we got? Oh my God. We're coming up on two inches again. So very close to the uh, height of the proponent. Comfortable handle. If you like um, cleaver style blades, the little notch in the front and a little swedge, it's kind of cool. 154 cm, not a steel that is uh, anything to really take lightly. It was the steel for Benchmade for years and years and years before they got into S30V. And uh, some of the custom knife makers, uh, 154 cm, that was the bee's knees, so to speak, back in the day. But there is the Sheepdog XL, and this guy is pretty much drop shut. Very stiff detent on this guy. You got to really give it a good pull, but it's positive, and all of these lock open like a rock. Let's line them up. Sheepdog XL, GPB1, John Gray by Kaiser, um, Formax Scout, and uh, the Proponent. Getting fancy, putting them different ways here. And let's stick the Smilodon, PMP Smilodon over on the side. So, um, 
probably got the most premium steel on the Smilodon. You got S35 on the Kaiser, 154 on the uh, Kaiser Sheepdog XL, Boss 10A on the Formax Scout, and good old basic D2 on that budget model proponent from Artisan. There you go. Those are my pocket brutes. <laughs> They are uh, some real mega knives. So um, hope you enjoyed this little collection, sub-collection view. I'll be back with you soon. Be well, take care.